Hello, could somebody please confirm you can hear me? Yes. Great. All right, are there any questions before we get started? Let me close that down. My computer is going to be a little slow because it's still working on the uh, lecture meeting. I see a lot of emails, but nobody's going to ask a question. All right, uh, I have not looked at my emails yet today. I'll try and do that maybe during the lab. Let's see, I thought I closed that down. Oh shoot, I closed the syllabus down instead. All right, let me get the syllabus back up here. All right, today is April 25th. And we're supposed to be covering Lab 5, Streaking for Isolation and Culture Media. Let me share my screen. It's the wrong one. Come on. All right, you should see my screen now. So we're going to be doing Lab 5, Streaking for Isolation and Culture Media. Let me state that by next week, by next Tuesday, you should read the Unknown Project Instructions on Canvas. You should go through that. I'm going to talk about the Unknown Project next week, and hopefully we'll get it started next week. Uh, where you find the Unknown Project Instruction, let me see if I can show you. Click on the course. Come on. See, I said this computer is kind of slow. Uh, scroll down to, I think it's week five lab. And in week five lab that is turned on, we have the unknown instructions. So uh, this is the instructions for doing the unknown project. I'll talk about it. Um, next week. And then we'll start the unknown project next week, assuming I get my act together and everything emailed out. Any questions about any of that? Let me remind you, or you are going to have a lab this Wednesday. Oh, good. The uh, lecture file is finished. So now my computer will work a little quicker. But the next uh, Wednesday, meaning this Wednesday, I guess, um, starting tonight at 8 p.m., you can take the quiz two, and it must be finished by 8 p.m. Wednesday night. Oops. Yeah, quiz two. All right, got the right one. All right, any questions about any of that? If not, let's go ahead and go to the uh, lesson, lesson five. Hmm. I think that's the one I want. Let me see if that's highlighted. Nope, that's not the one I want. I need to go through and put a T on all the ones I want to lecture from. So it must be that one. And let's go ahead and open up the worksheet as well. All right. For all labs, lab five, cultivation of bacteria, culture media, inoculation, and isolation. We do have some reading for all the labs. So read page 157 to 162 of your text. And then uh, that's on culture media. And then read page 162 to 163 uh, on how to obtain a peer culture. 
We do have some supplemental material today. You will be doing the video clips. And I think you're going to do a virtual lab. I don't have that crossed out. Let me just check. Nope, I've got it crossed out here, so uh, I should cross that out. It looks like we do not have a virtual lab today. So let's go in there and cross it out. Nope, that's the worksheet. We had a virtual lab, but it uh, requires use of um, Flash, and the uh, maker of Flash is no longer supporting Flash, and you can't download it anymore, and what else? Um, it doesn't work, even if you were to have it. So, And hopefully we'll find another virtual lab to replace this, but at the moment we have not found another virtual lab. Surprisingly, people who made the virtual labs on Flash have not gone and made newer ones. And uh, since we didn't make any virtual labs in Flash, we simply borrowed what was available from the internet. Um, we can't change it. You can actually go into Flash and if you have the original file, make it in, I think it's um, HTML file, HTML5 and some code, uh, but we don't have the original file, so we can't do that. All right, the learning objectives to this lab be able to understand the importance of proper specimen collection and transport to the lab. Explain the five principal steps used by microbiologists to process a specimen they get. And then differentiate between various types of culture media. Explain the purpose of streak plate culture technique, aka uh, streaking for colony isolation. And then five, lastly, define the following terms, what's selective media, differential media, and reducing media. So the ability to isolate pathogens from a clinical specimen submitted to a lab for growing is only as good as the collection technique and the timely transport of the specimen to the lab. Some microbes are sensitive to desiccation. They'll dry out. Some microorganisms are sensitive to oxygen, uh, the anaerobes. And these media require special transport medium. Actually, all med uh, cells require somewhat special transport uh, medium. Meaning you can't just move naked cells along, they would dry out. They'd also need, especially if the transport was lengthy, they need a, a food supply. Sorry about this. I was hoping drinking would help that. I've got a little bit of a froth in my throat. Once the specimen is received in the lab for a microbiological culture, the microbiologists employ the five principal steps to process it. First, there's inoculation. Two, there's isolation. Three, there's incubation. Four, there's inspection. And five, there's identification. Inoculation is just placing the specimen on an artificial culture medium to initiate growth. Isolation is spatially separate out the microbial growth so that we have distinct colonies. You need distinct colonies so you can then get a pure culture to grow. Incubation is just placing the culture media in an environment where conditions are facilitated for growth. And then inspect the culture, examine it for the presence of microbial growth, make initial characteristics. You can't identify it on just inspection of the culture. However, you then do identification where you perform specific tests to ID 
any pathogenic microbes that are isolated. So these five steps will be described and they use different types of culture media. So we have different types of culture media. We've already uh, discussed one. You should be familiar with general purpose media. That includes things like Na, nutrient auger, Na, N-A-Y-E, that's nutrient auger with yeast extracts added. And then uh, TSA, or triptych soy auger. These are general purpose media that grow a lot of organisms. They are non-selective. They do not grow everything. A fastidious organism will not grow on a general purpose media. A fastidious organism requires certain additives to the media in order for them to grow. So to promote the growth of fastidious microbes, those that have very specific nutritional requirements, we tend to grow them on an enriched general purpose media. For example, blood auger has 5% sheep's blood added to triptych soy auger to help the organisms grow. The blood supplies the nutrients that some fastidious organisms require to grow, like Streptococcus pyogenes, the bacteria that causes strep throat, will not grow on a general purpose media plate. You need to grow it on blood auger because it has requirements uh, to grow and the blood supplies those requirements. Another general purpose media that we're going to talk about today is chocolate auger. And that's usually abbreviated cap, C for chocolate, A for auger, P for plate. Blood auger is usually abbreviated BAP, B for blood, A for auger, P for plate. Those are two enriched general purpose media to grow fastidious organisms. Selective media is a media that contains chemicals that inhibit or halt the growth of some organisms. They do not affect other organisms. Keep in mind when you're using a selective media that the selective media isn't necessarily perfectly selective, meaning it may not be 100% selective. It may allow growth of an organism which is selected against, but that organism will grow much slower than the organism would grow on a, uh, a general purpose media. And second, even those organisms that are supposed to grow on selective media may form smaller colonies or grow a little slower on the selective media than comparing to their growth on a, uh, a general purpose media. Usually the selective media allows one type of cell to grow and it grows normally. And then it doesn't allow other types of media or other types of cells to grow and they're selected against. But sometimes it's not 100% selective. There's also differential media this is a media that contains chemicals that allow you to see visible differences among different groups of cells growing on that media. These differences that show up are unrelated to how well the organism can grow on the media. So differential culture media allows you to um, allows dissimilar bacteria, meaning different bacteria, to be visually distinguish each other. They may have different colors. They may have different um, they may do something different in the auger. Okay. So it allows you to visually distinguish two different cells from each other. You may see differences. 
And then lastly, there's reducing media. This is media to promote the growth of anaerobic bacteria. And these, this media is required for uh, strict anaerobes, where low or no oxygen conditions are required in order to culture these organisms. Any question about the different types of media? All right. Now, it's important to note that culture media can be classified into more than one category. For example, McConkie's auger is both selective and differential, meaning it's selective. It has compounds, chemicals in it that prevent the growth of gram positives. So gram negatives can grow on McConkie's. Most gram positives cannot, and then most gram negatives can. McConkie's is one of those good augers, a good selective auger, and that is most of the time you see the selection is 100%. So either the organism grows or it doesn't grow. It is also differential in that if the cells can grow on McConkie's, it has uh, the sugar lactose in it and a pH indicator, and it'll change its color depending on whether the cells can ferment the sugar lactose. If uh, the cells ferment any sugar, they will make the environment more acidic. And on McConkie's, if the pH drops, meaning it becomes more acidic, you will get the cells looking pinkish or light purple, and then the media around it will also turn that color. And that's because of the decrease in the pH. If the cells do not ferment the sugar lactose, then the pH will not drop, and uh, the cells will not become pinkish or purplish. And here, these cells, they're normally white. The cells will remain the color that the cells are to begin with. This one is mainly white. And the media and the cells are not pinkish or purplish. Any question about that? The point is, McConkie's is both selective. Gram-negatives can grow. Both of these are two gram-negative cells because they're growing. And if the cells can grow, you can then differentiate on the basis of uh, their fermenting the sugar lactose. Fermenters are pinkish or purplish, and then the non-fermenters are not that color, pinkish or purplish. Another uh, plate, which is both <clears throat> differential and enriched, is uh, blood auger. It is differential on the basis of hemolysis, and it's enriched in that it allows fastidious organisms to grow if the fastidious organism requires the ingredients found in blood to grow. Okay, so if it grows on blood auger, and well, if it's won't grow on triptych soy auger or some other general purpose media, and it will grow on blood auger, then it's fastidious organism and blood auger is an enriched media. And blood auger also is differential in that we can determine different um, <clears throat> hemolytic activities. So if the bacteria hemolyze the blood, we can see differential hemolysis. There's three types of hemolysis. The first is gamma hemolysis, shown here. And you note the red blood cells are red, all the way up to where the cells are. The cells are white here. This is uh, gamma hemolysis or no hemolysis. These cells have no hemolytic activity. There's also alpha hemolysis. Let me blow this up a little bit. And you can see a very skinny, dark ring between the red of the blood auger 
and then the white of the bacteria. The bacteria is shaped like an alpha. Uh, the darkenings, the darkening ring around the alpha. And you'll notice inside the alpha, it's also darker than, than here. Uh, this is alpha hemolysis, which is partial hemolysis. And the darkening makes the blood look either darker, shown here, or it may look greenish, which I don't have a picture of that. And that's from part of the red blood cells lysing, and the other red blood cells remain, and so it's partial hemolysis, and it just appears darker or greenish. This we call alpha hemolysis, and there's an alpha. If you don't know, that's a gamma. And then the third hemolytic activity is beta hemolysis, which is complete hemolysis. Uh, the white here in the beta is the bacteria. And then in this clear region, it's not white, that's actually clear. And that's seen within the beta and around the beta is the complete hemolysis of the blood. And that lyses all the blood, so there's no red in this region and it appears clear. You can actually look through this region of the plate. So if you're to hold the plate up to something like a light or look at the clock, you can actually see it. You can see through the plate here. You cannot see out of the plate here. Okay, any questions about that? Three hemo hemolytic uh, activities of the bacteria you can see. You'll note that around the beta hemolysis, we have a ring of alpha hemolysis. And that's just something normal. We usually see a ring of alpha hemolysis around the beta hemolysis. All right, no questions, let's move on. Oh, I can mention that uh, Streptococcus pyogenes shows beta hemolysis on a blood auger plate. Staphylococcus aureus shows beta hemolysis on a blood auger plate. Staphylococcus epidermidis shows very little, but a little bit of, of alpha hemolysis on a blood auger plate. And uh, What's one that shows no hemolysis? Uh, e. coli shows gamma hemolysis on a blood auger plate. You don't need to know that, but I'm just telling you. All right, so this table shows you the different types of media. There's a general purpose media, promotes the growth of most organisms. And there's three that we've already mentioned. Uh, TSA, NA, and NA, general purpose media. And then there's enriched media. That includes BAP, blood auger, plates, and chocolate auger, CAP. Blood auger is also differential, so it's differential and enriched. It's differential on uh, its ability to determine the hemolytic activity of the bacteria. We have selective and differential media, and MAC, EMB, or eosine methylene blue, or HE, hectone, agar, are both selective and differential. They are selective in that they select four gram negatives to grow on all three of these media, and they select against gram positives. So gram positives tend not to grow on both, on all three of these, MAC, E and B and HE. These are also differential media, and you can uh, differentiate on the cell's ability to ferment the sugar lactose. So if the bacteria can ferment the sugar lactose, you'll have a different color. On McConkie's, uh, if the bacteria ferments the uh, sugar lactose, it'll be pinkish or light purple. Uh, on HE, uh, the bacteria will be salmon colored. That's sort of a yellow-orange in color. Maybe a little bit of pink in there too, salmon colored. 
On E and B, if the bacteria ferment the sugar lactose, there'll be a metallic green or a dark color, like, like approaching black. Any questions about that? We do have one selective media, and this is a phenyl ethyl alcohol or PEA. This is selective against gram negative cells. So gram positives will grow on PEA. Gram negatives tend not to grow on PEA. So PEA is only selective. And then we have a, a selective and differential media, mannitol salt auger. It uh, uh, selects for organisms which uh, can grow in uh, high salt concentration. Mannitol salt auger has 7% sodium chloride in it. And if the organism cannot grow in that, it will be selected against. Something like E. coli cannot grow in uh, on a mannitol salt auger plate. Staphylococcus aureus and actually all staphylococcal species like staphylococcal epidermidis can grow on mannitol salt auger plates. Uh, do understand that uh, we have other species besides members of the Staphylococcus family that will grow on mannitol salt auger plates, like uh, Micrococcus luteus, which grows on your skin, Micrococcus roseus, will grow on, um, which also grows on your skin, will grow on a mannitol salt auger plate. Uh, mannitol salt auger is a, is a selective just on the basis of the salt. It's also differential on the basis of the bacteria to ferment the sugar mannitol. If the bacteria ferment the sugar mannitol, it will become acidic, and in this case, it'll turn yellow. Staphylococcus aureus does grow on the plate and can ferment the sugar mannitol, and it will turn yellow, um, which that cell is already golden in color or yellowish in color, but it will cause the agar around the colony to turn uh, yellow. So you'll see a yellow halo around the colony. And then other staphylococcal species, with the exception of staphylococcus, oh gosh, Lost its name. I just had it. Staphylococcus cephalophyticus uh, also will turn yellow. But all other staphylococcal species will not ferment the sugar um, mannitol, so they will not turn yellow. So if you're looking to see if you have... Uh, Staphylococcus aureus causing a skin disease. You can simply grow that on the uh, um, mannitol salt auger plate. And if it grows and then turns yellow, it's most likely to be um, Staphylococcus aureus. The other main Staphylococcus species on your skin is Staphylococcus epidermidis, and it doesn't turn yellow. All right, so remember uh, when you get a bacteria from a clinical specimen, you go through the five steps, inoculation, isolation, incubation, inspection, and then lastly, identification. Inoculation is just inoculating the appropriate media with the clinical specimen. Isolation is uh, growing up the cells to get pure cultures. And Louis Pasteur developed the concept of uh, using pure cultures, and then he developed the technique for isolating a pure culture. His technique is very difficult to do, 
And what you had to do is grow it up in liquid culture at different dilutions. And you made 10 replicas of each dilution. And if you got only one tube out of 10 showing growth, then Louis Pasteur assumed that that culture was a pure culture. It actually wasn't 100% pure, but it, it tended to be pure. We'll word it that way. Uh, that was a very difficult way of getting a pure culture. Fortunately, Robert Koch came along and he developed the streak plate method where you streak the cells on an auger plate so that you're put down, streak down uh, isolated cells, and then they go on and grow, forming isolated colonies, so that you can get a pure culture. Now, streaking just one time only means that about 75% of the isolated colonies will be a pure culture. So what you do is you take from that first streak obtain cells from an isolated colony, and then streak it out for colony isolation again. The second time you get isolated colonies, the cells that have gone through two colony isolation events will be greater than 95% pure. And that's good enough that we say that that is a pure culture. In reality, you will every once in a while have an impure culture, but it's less than five colonies out of a hundred. Okay. In reality, you'd probably run into about two or one colony in a hundred. That's not. So if you want a pure culture, what you do is you streak it out for colony isolation two times, <clears throat> put the cells through two colony isolation events and then use those cells as a pure culture. Sorry, my frog's coming back. What you do for streaking is you uh, streak cells out in different sectors on a plate that would be the first sector, there's the second sector, there's the third sector, and there's the fourth sector. You don't have to do it in four sectors. Sometimes people only do three sectors. But the point is you have more than one sector. And uh, what you do to get isolated colonies, let me blow this up a little, is you streak the cells out here and then this will be usually fairly heavy because you're getting cells from a stock culture. And then you take your loop and you sterilize it by either passing it through a flame or put it in the Bunsen burner until it's red hot. And then you cool the loop down. And then you, usually you cool it in the uh, auger you're about to streak. And then you start it in this place and then you streak it for this sector uh, and you take it and streak it in the previous sector that you already streaked, plated. Uh, you don't go, this is showing you a little too far, you don't go all the way back here. What you do is go, let me blow this up a little bit. You go where there's some dilution. So when you streak it out, this will be the most concentrated and then it'll be less concentrated and then less concentrated. And then down here, it would be the least concentrated. So what you do to set up this sector is you st start your streak here in this air sector. And then you come over to this sector, getting where it's somewhat diluted from the first sector and then come back. And then you come back about three or four times. See, this is one, two, three, four, five. That's a little too much, not too bad, but you only come back and streak it in this previous sector three or four times, and you do it where it's diluted, like this region and this region and that region. You don't come way back here because this will not be diluted. 
and this would be. And then you get the bacteria growing here. And then you do the same. You take your loop, sterilize it. And then this actually shows it better. You start streaking in this sector and you come back here. What's wrong is you don't come back to this region. You only come and pick up the cells from this streak or that streak or that streak. And the reason is you don't want to get it where in this sector it's really heavy, you want to get it where it's a little bit lighter in this sector. So you bring it and you come to about here and then you go back. And what's showing you is you only do it about three or four times. And this is doing it four or five, six times. Once again, a little too much. And then you take the loop and you sterilize it again and you streak out the next sector and once again, you do it. This is showing it a little better. It's not going way back here. It's not even going here, but it is going there. And I prefer you not going there. But if you, you come back about three or four times to here, here, and here. And the point of getting in the previous streak is you pick up some cells and you want them diluted. Why you don't go way back here. And then you streak it out here and someplace along the line in either this sector or this sector or this sector, you're putting down isolated colonies. In this case, right down here. And if you notice right here, it's not dilute enough to have isolated uh, colonies. But once we get down here, we do have isolated colonies. And you're putting down isolated cells and then you take this plate and you incubate it and it'll grow up into isolated colonies. Now, doing it one time is not enough to get it a pure culture because this colony here and that colony here are only about 75% of the time pure. And that's just not good enough in microbiology. You want it at least 95% or greater. What you do is you take the cells from an isolated colony, just one, and then streak it out for colony isolation again. And then the second time you get isolated colony, these cells are 95% or greater pure. And so you grow those cells up as a pure culture. Any question about any of that? All right, incubation is just taking what you, uh, your cells you put on a culture media and then putting them in an appropriate environment to grow. We have incubators where we put our uh, cells to grow. Simple incubators, like the ones we have in our lab, only heat up the, uh, the cells, the, the auger plate, to a certain temperature. And that's usually either 35 or 37 degrees, although it could be 30 degrees. And uh, it also provides humidity we have a plate of water down there that increases the humidity and that prevents the plate from drying out as quickly if you didn't have that in there. There are fancier incubators like this one here and they can control how much oxygen the cells are exposed to and how much CO2 they're exposed to. Okay, and then the incubator also is used to grow the cells for a specific time. Like if you had a slow growing cell, you would grow it for at least two days, maybe even a week, and then get the colonies. Okay. All right, they then inspect the growth on the colonies you did. You can get some characteristics from what's growing. You first look to see, did anything grow? Because uh, um, if you got a clinical specimen, hopefully it'll grow in the lab. And then if you did get growth, you can make some of the initial colony characteristics. All colonies have different sizes, shapes, margin, and elevation. And we'll talk a little bit that in the lab. Actually, we've talked about that already. This was lab 01. So you can make some initial inspection and 
and start identifying your unknown. But usually you cannot identify the unknown just from the colony characteristics. You then identify what you have grown by running different laboratory tests. All right, know the terms of this lab. You don't need to look at the references and then do the laboratory exercises. Let me go to the worksheet now. Let's go ahead and close that down. Oops, this worksheet doesn't begin until the questions. So let's go back to the lab module. We have a little video you can watch on inoculating an auger plate using the street plate culture technique. So watch that for how you uh, streak for isolated colonies. And this uh, procedure only use three sectors. And I mentioned you can have either three or four sectors. You only need to watch to four minutes and 15 seconds into the video. And then we have a short uh, video showing you beta hemolysis alpha hemolysis and gamma hemolysis. Please look at those videos when we're growing the cells on blood auger. And then we have a video on McConkie's auger. You only need to watch to uh, three minutes and 15 seconds into the video. And a short video on mannitol salt auger. Uh, we used to have a virtual lab on uh, uh, street plate colony, and unfortunately, that no longer works. Yeah. All right, then go to the worksheet. Remember, only turn in the worksheet. If you turn in the lab module, uh, you may fill up the space on my Canvas website, and then students won't be able to turn in the, uh, the assignments. And if that happens, you will get a penalty for sure. Uh, I may apply a penalty if you do turn in the uh, lab module instead of the worksheet. So only turn in the worksheet. It's much smaller than the lab module. Uh, answer the, uh, the questions. One, describe the natural circumstance where staphylococcal species of bacteria might benefit from salt tolerance. A natural occurrence of staphylococcus growing is not something you do in the lab. That is an artificial environment where we'd grow staphylococcus. So mention some place where we can naturally find staphylococcus where it's growing naturally and then answer this question. And then two, how might hemolysis benefit a hemolytic organism? So we have a species a bacteria that hemolyzes the blood and what benefit does the bacteria get from that? Okay, students sometimes don't tell me what the benefit is. You need to tell me what is the benefit to the bacteria if that bacteria can hemolyze the blood. And then three, Imagine you have a culture media containing a single bacteria species. It could be one of several possible species. Describe a scenario where you use mannitol salt auger, blood auger, and EMB plates to help you identify the unknown bacterial species. So how would you use these plates to help you identify the species? You need to discuss two properties of each of these, of mannitol salt auger, blood auger, and EMB, or it's not complete. So I require two properties for each of these different augers, or these different plates. Four, what is the main goal for streaking for colony isolation, being streaking for isolation? Five, what happens to the growth on the plate if you forget to sterilize the loop in between sectors when streaking for isolation. So we have a plate and you're streaking for colony isolation. 
Yeah, let me use this sign. Now I can use this sign. And you do sterilize it at the beginning. It doesn't say you don't sterilize it to the end beginning. And then you take, this isn't quite right. It should be circular, but we'll go ahead with it. You do make a sector. And then you take your loop and you don't sterilize it in between sectors. And you start sector two. I don't have it circular here, so I'm having a hard time doing it exactly right. And then you start your next sector, sector three, and you go into sector two, and you don't sterilize before uh, streaking out sector three. And then on sector four, you do the same. You begin sector four, and you don't uh, sterilize between sector three and sector four. You need to be specific. You have to tell me what you see on the plate in each sector. So you can't just say something like, you won't get isolated colonies. You need to tell me what the plate looks like in sector one, in sector two, sector three, and sector four. And six, what happens to the growth on the plate if you transfer from the stock culture to inoculate each of the sectors? Be specific discussing each of the sector. So if you have four sectors, you have to tell me what the growth looks like in sector one, in sector two, sector three, and sector four. Once again, if you just state that you are unlikely to get isolated colonies, that's not an acceptable answer. You need to be more specific. Seven, suppose you successfully streak a plate to obtain isolated colonies of two different bacterial species, meaning you have a mixed culture and you streak it out for colony isolation on a plate. How can you use this plate to create a new pure culture of one of the bacteria? Be specific in your answer. So we want what we call a pure culture. What can you do to get a pure culture from those colonies? And you can assume something simple, like the colonies give different colored colonies, okay? Or that's a little too simple. Yeah, something like that. All right, eight. In the table below are a variety of different auger plate media. Denote whether each medium is non-selective, and this is a general growth media, or if it is selective, or if it is differential by placing an X in the appropriate column or columns, meaning you may have more than one X in a row. Night nutrient auger could be non-selective, it could be selective, it could be differential media. And I'm not aware of any media which is both non-selective and selective. So those, you better not put an X in both of these because I'm not aware of any. To be selective, it can't be non-selective. But there are some which are more than one. Okay? So put an X where you think nutrient auger is and then all the others. And then nine, take a look at these plates here. One of them was used for streak plate method, meaning we streaked out the plate to obtain isolated colonies. Is it plate A, plate B, or plate C? And that's the questions. All right, I'll be here until, uh, oh, we'll say 8.15, or until the last student answers the question. Uh, to help you with any questions. Remember, you cannot work on the lab for the extra credit study group assignment. In the extra study group assignment, you have to be working on something that you need to study for an exam. So do the lab in your lab time. You are not going to get extra credit for working on the lab you will get lab credit for the lab. Any questions? All right.
I'll be here until eight o'clock or eight fifteen. Sorry. Let me change that and say I'll be here until eight fifteen or until the last student leaves. Once the last student leaves, I'm going to leave too. Mm -hmm.